Good evening, good evening. Good evening, Zambia. Good evening, everyone, wherever you are. Greeting you in your time zone. How are you, Mama Mati Pamulishani? Trifewino, Mama Pumulo, Ungai Mamulishani, Mawuka Shani, in your time zone there. Otherwise, are, okay, it's 11, it's just after 11 a.m. here, Pacific time. Welcome, guys, to Poshanye. Happy Monday. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Mutozi Chwangi, Mzuile Chwangi, Molibi Habuti, Machoma Bwanji, Mwakala Buti, Mudingahi. I'm getting, I'm sharpening my skills. Muliuli, Muliuli. Mudingahi. Yes. So welcome, welcome, guys. Comment below. Where are you watching us from? Raggy, I see you. Raggy, Cynthia Lawrence, thank you for always supporting. Isabel Otonga, comments below, guys. Send an emoji. Don't send your location because they are scammers. <laughs> if you send your location, they are scammers. So just send us, a, you know, say something, a greeting. Send an emoji. Chitani like, Chitani like. Mupose go to my like. Or to my heart, you know, <laughs> say something to us. We miss you guys at the weekend. Mama Mati powers off. She is back. Mama, the floor is yours. You can welcome our guests. They missed you. They were asking you, <laughs> where is Mama Mati? But today she is back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mama Pumulo for the works you are doing. Unfortunately, I couldn't be with you. I had a family commitment mm. and um, you won't believe it. I will say it here, I had COVID. So I, I really couldn't come on to the program, you know, and um, I thank you Mama Pumulo for your prayers. Um, I'm back and uh, as usual to continue speaking for this country to give credible checks and balances and to talk for the voiceless. You've addressed all the greetings in most of the Zambian languages. I concur with you and um, I'm happy to be back. Thank you. Thank you guys. Well, Mama, good to hear you are back after the COVID attack. You know, COVID is there, it's real. Uh, take care, everybody. If you're in public places, mask up, mask up. Otherwise, it's good that you're back and you're fully recovered and looking beautiful as ever. So <laughs> it's nice, guys. I'm excited. Today, we have our topic. Our topic is on social media. We had our president in his speech. He said something about social media and what people are saying on social media. And then the Honorable Kabuswe was in church and he said social, something about social media. So today uh, we are talking about social media. And for me, social media is a subject that is dear to me because I've connected with so many people. I, have, I left Zambia over 20 years ago, but I am connected to Zambia because of social media. So when I hear the president or high upper ranking, high profile officials, talk about social media, I get concerned because this is our, this is where we are all getting connected is social media. And also Madame Chushika Sanda, also the Minister of Information, she said something about social media. So it's a pretty worrisome for me to hear all these high profile people talk about uh, social media. And I just wanna say, uh, I am a human rights activist consultant so I train human rights uh, uh, advocates and I speak for human rights. This page is a human rights page. We are here to fight for a better Zambia. We are here to ensure that our democracy is respected. So when I hear uh, such comments, it worries me. So what is your comment on that, Mama Matipa, before we proceed? Well, for me, um, Mama Pumulo, um, like it or not, social media and politics are inseparable. Um, a lot of political 
discourse happens on these social media platform. It engages the voters as it serves um, as a modern day public forum. So uh, for me, social media, when I was growing up, it was non-existent. And even when I was growing up, there were no computers. We grew up with typewriters and um, it was very difficult to disseminate information. Um, we had landlines uh, in terms of telephone. So the world is uh, evolving. There are new things coming uh, into the world. And one of them is social media, as well as cell phones. Nowadays, you can just pick up a phone and call a relative, your loved ones, your parents, and check on, on them. You don't have to write a letter, which will take so long to, to get to them. So things have changed, and I think they've changed for the, be for the best. So I don't see any reason why social media should be bashed. Social media has helped a lot of politicians worldwide. And so it is encouraged in disseminating information. You know, it reaches a wider audience and I feel it is less costly. Um, and when you look at the top social media networks, uh, I think Twitter, covers about 53% of uh, social media, um, you know, people on, 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 uh, on Twitter. Facebook is about 44% and I've never been to TikTok. <laughs> so, uh, but I hear it's around 33% as of 2022 data. So social media is very much encouraged. I'll tell you one thing, uh, Mama, Pum Mama Pumulo, a long time ago when someone dies, you know, a message had to be sent to you to say so-and-so died. But these days we are learning about so many deaths as well on social media. I, I personally, uh, you know, it has helped me because sometimes I hear of someone's death on social media and it affords me the opportunity to actually attend the funeral of somebody that I loved. So it's it's a it's a very uh, encouraging media to belong to. You know, gone are the days of print and electronic media, um, always uh, being on the, on the platform. So social media is something that we should welcome in society. Thank you, Mama Pumu. Thank you. So actually, I have a video that I want us to watch before we proceed. So guys, share, share, share. Invite people. Uh, I want to share this video and then uh, we can continue talking. So Mama, as I share, you can continue. Give me a few minutes. You can continue. Uh, mm, yeah, so as yeah, I as share I, this, yeah. As I was saying, Mama Pumulo, it is, um, it is far from being a, a perfect news source but uh, it's still the benefit of uh, real-time facts. Um, you know, when you are checking for, for, for news. So it's a very big plus, you know. Social media has the power to change. Sorry, sorry. Uh, social media, in my view, has the power to change uh, not just a message, but the dynamics. So I'm ready. I'm ready now. Okay. Uh, there's no volume. Uh, is there is there a volume now? No. No. Okay. So he is saying that uh, he wants to talk about social media. He says we need to pray for social media. 
There are so many lies on social media and publication. So I think since you can't hear the volume, I think it's been blocked. Yeah. Let me just close that. Uh, let me end that. Uh, okay. So we have our honorable Kabuswe there. So we have honorable Kabuswe. He was in a church somewhere in Chilabombwe. And he said that we need to be, con to be aware of social media because there are so many lies and publication on social media. This is the minister of minds. So when I saw this, I was very much concerned because one, UPND, they never campaigned. They never campaigned in the 2021 election. They never campaigned on the ground. Most of the, this, their new PND election was won on social media. And I was one of the people who campaigned for them on social media. So the, he, uh, me, Honorable Kabuswe is saying that there's a lot of lies and fabrication. That is two. One, UPND, you came to power through social media. Two, we have seen a lot of people, high ranking officials, including the president and the Rakabuswe say there is a flies and publication on social media. That's two. And then three, the new Dawn government, they campaigned on a promise of democracy. When they were in opposition, there was a cyber law that was enacted by PF. And they promised to say when they come to power, they will remove it because this cyber law was infringing on the freedom of speech, which is in the human rights, it's uh, article number 19, freedom of opinion and expression. Everyone has a right to freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek and impart information and ideas through any media, regardless of frontiers. So I would like to remind the new Dawn government that you came to on power, you came into power with a promise of freedom of speech because your, your freedom was infringed by you by the PF. That's why in when I knew Donny, you even removed that cyber bill, you removed it to allow Zambian to talk freely. So now, how is it a problem that when people are just asking you to deliver your campaign promises, you are labeling us to be, you know to be fra fabricating lies and, uh, and manipulating information. I would like to challenge this government. If, for example, here at uh, Queen Pumi Show, which we are going to change the name because it's not about me anymore. This page is a page for human rights and we have a lot of hosts who will be coming here. So this page name will change to Ubuntu Forum or Ubuntu Chat Cafe because we are human rights advocates and we'll be here and we'll be talking to for a better Zambia. So we are saying this new dawn, they removed the cyber bill because they wanted freedom of speech. Now, how is it a problem when people are exercising their freedom of speech? I mean, it's one thing if somebody is disrespecting the president, then that's another problem. But I don't think anyone on this page has disrespected the presidency or his, uh, his uh, entire cabinet. We just say the truth. We, are, we say the truth on this page. And if it's not the truth, come out and correct us. We are not public servants. We are bloggers. So we are free to hold an opinion. And the, if my opinion is not acceptable, so be it, deal with it. I am not a public official. I am not an elected official. I am a blogger. I am a human rights activist, you know? So there, of course there are things which can be like, if you say things which are really like crazy, yes. But as far as I'm concerned, we don't say anything crazy on this page. We are holding this government accountable to their campaign promises. 
then the same people they removed the cyber bill because they wanted freedom of speech. Now, because they are in government and they are failing to deliver their campaign promises. When we talk here, we are being called manipulators and liars. We will not allow you to label us as black sheep. And then I saw another gentleman who was calling people slay queens and whatever. This thing got a stop of you men disrespecting women. Look at the, the new dawn government. Now is it full of men? But when women talk about any political matter, they become slay queens. So what if I'm a slay queen? Did I slay with your father? Now let another we saw. It's about time Zambians start respecting women. Zambian women, we do everything except governance. When it comes to governance, we are sidelined. And now you are you, you are engaging people who have been be given pause of appeasement to start calling us slay queens. I watched a video of, of Alice Rowland, you know, she's part of the she is part of the people they are calling out to be to be manipulating and lies because Alice is a socialite, you know. I'm going to say this about Alice because Alice, the video is out there. I watch an emotional video of her, and then you know, I watch the person. Is it Chela who did that video? Chela, it's about time you start respecting women. Even if you are supporting your, your president, I think let us respect women. This thing of calling women slay queens must be banned by a government official. Chela is representing the government. He's appointed by the president. And we cannot condone myself. I felt I am hurt. I am hurt to watch that video for someone who is a government official to talk so low about women regarding social media. And then I turn around, I see Bakabuswe talking about social media. What do you want us to do? Because you want this election on social media. And all these women, some of these women, like myself and Roland, we campaigned for you. So now that we, 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 we were holding you accountable to deliver your promises, we are liars and manipulators, it's a shame. And Nick, the floor is yours. So this is what I wanted to say. For me, it's just upsetting to see like a government official come on social media and start calling us women who are here on social media trying to do, to do what we can for a better Zambia, we are being called all these kinds of names. It's very hurtful and it should not be condoned. And the president should fire such people. Why is the president keeping such people around him who are disrespecting women? Why? Where are the women's organization in Zambia? They should be up in arms against that video by Chela. I don't care if you whatever all these all the people you were mentioning in the video. Why do you have to be to 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 label women as slave? We shall have a nakashwala if I have a terror me I am if I have a nakash. The men, those same PSS and whatever men, they are the ones who go after the women. But you don't see you scandalizing names of the permanent secretary or the ministers. You just say minister. You just say permanent secretary. That's why Alice was saying, you bring that minister of PSO now in the we in the if they are ministers, oh, one when in an Ariel and a minister, Mulete, mention my name and mention the name of that minister on Ariel It is a slander for you to just come online and start talking about slay queen. People have moved on. Don't open old wounds. That's what Alice was saying. You cannot continue to be slandering us women. Yeah? So that this country has been ruined by men. It has been led by men. For 58 years, men have been ruling Zambia. And look at what they have done. But look at uh, any woman, a woman day to say something, she's a slay queen. You start accusing her of sleeping with so-and-so. And you can't even bring the people she's sleeping with. Why don't you call out the men now? I'm fired twice. 
Bamabumba and all those things they were doing there, vid porn videos leads, they are still in government. Men do all kinds of scandals. You don't create videos to talk about that. I'm tired. I'm sick and tired to be called a Zambian for a country where women are disrespected. Disrespected by a government official. What does that mean? Anyway, Mama, you, you can go ahead. For me, it's just annoying. It's, it's kind of like, I don't know. Thank you, Mama uh, Kumolo. I was waiting whether that was a real, you can go, you can go yes. on. <laughs> <laughs> there, I'm handing over the floor to you. I am just like, oh my God. As Ellington said about uh, when you pull me, you've been saying the floor is yours. The floor is yours. I know the floor is yours. You continue talking and talking until tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, uh, uh, Mama Kumulo. Uh, as I was saying, you know, social media uh, has the power to change um, not just the message and the dynamics of uh, pol political corruption. It, it you know it has values as well as dynamics of conflicts in politics. We learn a lot. It enhances people's access to political information, as it disseminates huge information and it's news concerning the entire world. It's not only news concerning Zambia. Well, you know we have to change. We now know about everything that's happening in the world as quickly and as efficiently as possible because of social media. Social media is persuasive. It works to change opinions, especially political opinions because of abundance of ideas, thoughts, opinions, etc. And I equally feel there's great participation from the public on social media, whereas on electronic media, most electronic uh, media are government uh, media, government print media, gone are the days, you know? So we, which always favor a ruling government um, in as far as disseminating information is concerned. You will agree with me that many years ago, even right now, if ZNBC comes, I know a lot of friends of mine now that have stopped even watching the news because it's the same type of rhetoric information that you get. You cannot participate in it. Mm. It is what they feel they should disseminate uh, to you. The younger generation, in my view, are now becoming involved in politics so much due to the increase of political news posted on social media as it affects their lives. Before you saw the younger generation were not interested in politics. But now that the younger generation are on social media, I tell you, more than 70%, if not 80, whenever there's political news, it's the younger generation that are commenting, you know? And so it is helping people. The, the current president himself, he won elections because of social media. Social media went a buzz. I have never seen so much support for the UPND government on social media in my life. And that is the day I knew that UPND is actually, you know, winning this election. It is thanks to social media. If you remember, PF actually suspended social media on the day of voting. And there was an uproar, Mama Pumulo, from the youth. It angered them. Somehow, it equally also swayed the election. Because they, they, the youth said, but what is, it, what is happening? Is Zambia eventually becoming a one-party state by locking uh, uh, social media? And so we equally now have to address the issue of our grandmothers and grandfathers in the rural areas on how they can access information. Because you know that 
the, the, the people that vote also, apart from the youth, it is the elderly in the village that do not even know what social media is all about. And so we have to think and find a way of getting this information to them because freedoms are not respected in Africa. You know, people vote based on your campaign promises, which you do not execute. And so if your campaign promises are not executed, it assists my grandmother and my grandfather to make an informed decision to say, I'm not giving them my vote again. You, you understand what I mean? African politicians, we need to up our game to bring healthy competition. You know, HH was denied freedom of move, movement. So it's incumbent on him to change the narrative. He was so frustrated, but now he is now also hammering on his fellow opposition leaders. I was watching Harry Kalaba's posting yesterday where he had a meeting. I don't know whether it was in the Copper Belt. Bamapumolo, the man pulled the crowd. He pulled the crowd. Guess what happened today? And it's thanks to social media. Harry Kalaba's assets have been grabbed. So as Emmanuel Mwamba's assets. So we are asking ourselves, how much, uh, uh, how much control do you want to, to have? Does one person want to have? Because I think democracy is healthy for any society. Illiteracy, illiteracy levels in the rural areas are rife. And so we need to start building more schools so that our next generation is not left out. So that they know now how to access social media. Gone are our days where we went to school and we learned uh, uh, our uh, good subjects and our good manners, but we remained behind in as far as use of electronic media was concerned. Even uh, uh, computers were concerned. We lagged behind. And so now that the world has evolved, we need to carry everybody on board. And so it is not right to say social media is being abused. Yes, it is being abused to a certain extent when people start posting you know, pornography and things like that and start insulting. But for crying out loud, if you want to reach the masses, we now have a fora because you have curtailed the freedom of assembly. So at least give the people of a chance to have a freedom to as access you know, uh, um, social media so that they can disseminate their information and they can give you know, good checks and balances. Do not dictate in every angle. You know, the president complained against the PF. They curtailed him. They brought in so many rules for him. I remember him going to Chipata and at the Chipata airport, he was not allowed to enter in Chipata. Chipata didn't belong to the PF alone. It belonged to everyone. And so I didn't see any sense why the president was refused to enter Chipata and campaign because that was the time towards elections. And so why are you stopping people? Chishimba Kambwili, sympathizers going to his house to sympathize with him and they decide to sing a song. So now where two, three or 10 are gathered, are gathered in your house, you need to get a police permit. I don't think that is the way we wanna go. You are now taking us back to ancient days. It is not right. We are not here to mislead the public. We are bloggers. 
And so if you think that we as bloggers are giving false information to the people, the people now have social media, they go and research and they will come on this same platform, isn't it, Mama Pumulo? And tell us, you two were lying to us on that day. We have researched. Actually, you know, some, some people are, Anik, in the comments right now, like the other day I made a mistake. I thought, he, you know, PF sold the mine, but I was corrected instantly. In the comments, exactly. they are like, no, Mama. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You were corrected immediately. So people research. You know, they don't just listen to us blindly. When we err, as the saying goes, to err is human, but correct it as quickly as possible. We all stand corrected. Yeah. Yes. No. And so, if I, I, I'm sure even the, the, the current uh, government have equally said things that are not true. It is on record. We just have to go and dig them out and say, you said this, it is not true. So social media is a way of disseminating information. It influenced the pattern of voting during your time. So now let the people talk. As long as they talk with respect, as long as they give credible checks and balances. Do not tell the people to talk on social media. Times have so, changed. So, and, and Nick, I think, why do you think they don't want, they are not comfortable? For me, it's like, if you're doing what you're, if you're doing your job, why should you be concerned about people such as ourselves to have an opinion about your performance as a government? Why are you concerned? So you want to, do they all want us to be praise singers just to be cheering them on social media? Is that what they want? Mama Pomolo, it is a fact now that the sopranos, the autos, the tenors, and the bass are in recess. For me, I don't call them praise singers anymore. It's soprano, auto, tenor, and bass. They are in recess because they used to come on this very social media, some with emojis, with an open mouth to say, I am singing the loudest bars. Mulela Pira. Yes. It is this social media that you came on and said, Murenya Mulela Pira. On this social media. And I did not see any any UPND despise that, including the head of state, including the head of state. And so we who are giving checks and balances without abusing the facilities that we have, you now go and say, we are abusing social media. Talk to those people who were abusing social media with Murenya Murela Pira. Huh? You heard them. Mama Pumulo, I feel they are scared because they actually listen to us. Mind you, it is a fact that social media influences a lot of change in government. They listen. If you remember how much we propounded on, on load shedding, what happened? We have propounded so much on fertilizer. We have propounded so much on CDF. We've brought people who have spoken about CDF being a sham. And now we are seeing CDF now being distributed quickly, quickly. Yeah, and, and so you know, exactly. And I saw like you were Kabuswe in his speech at the church. He was like, you have to tell us where we are going wrong. Even Chela Tukutai said, if you have a problem with the Minister of Labor, you know, he, he said something about it's not the president's duty to, to, to monitor the pay of Zambians in private companies. 
It is the duty, it's a part of the nation. And we have talked about the minimum wage on this platform. And this social media is the modern way of communication because it's a fast, effective, real time, it has no borders. So there's no way you want to start talking about people who are holding you accountable. They, if someone is holding you accountable, they are telling lies or manipulating stuff. If we are manipulating something, come and tell the truth. You are the public servants. Some of us, we are just bloggers and we sacrifice our time to come here. The minister, wherever he's going, he's being paid. And we are saying that these ministers should stop going to the churches, leave churches out of politics. Leave churches out of politics. And what happened up to now, we are still holding the Bible and our minerals, but they are sent a day and night. Some are being taken by trucks, some are being taken by helicopter. Every day, impoverishing our own people. Shame on my new dawn. You have started going to churches, corrupting church officials. If a minister goes to a church and leaves a hefty type there, do you think that church minister or father will, will condemn this government? And the, and the church is a ready audience because Zambia, we are a spiritual country. So all churches are packed. But what I'm here to tell Zambians is I smell the coffee. This trick of politicians going to church is just you to sway them on their side. You need to stop this politics. Go to the people, go to the miners, go to Kansufa Township, Mpa Market, Padia Stadium, call people to come. And then once you call people to come to the stadium, if people show up, whoever shows up, that is how you're going to gauge your popularity. If nobody shows up to meet you in a stadium, then you know you need to fix something. You were elected to help Zambians, not to help yourselves. And don't start condemning us, Pano, whoever to our social media to make policy. When we were campaigning for you, were we lying? Or you used us to tell lies? Because you knew exactly that when you come in office, you will not do what you were, what you were saying in campaign. But you know what? I wish I did my homework. That's the only regret that I did. Only regret that I have is like I didn't do my background check on the, the, the president and the and he, if he had any history on, of, on public service or if he was a statesman, you know, and that is a problem that most of us Zambians. We are landing ourselves because we just see somebody to come on the platform. He's a president. He's, we start supporting him. No, we have learned our lesson from this new dawn. We came from a fire to a frying pan. Sorry, from a frying pan to a fire because we didn't do our homework. Yeah, Mama Pumolo, I I, I believe uh, I wish to welcome Queen Cobra, uh, who is on uh, the show listening to us. Welcome, Mama. Queen Cobra, and she has just commented that at uh, Fimba Upoke Mulenya Murela Pira, even the vice president used the Fimba Upoke. What a shame. What a shame. A Queen religious... Cobra, join us. Let me send you the link. Let me send you the link. Queen Cobra, if you are free, to join so, as you... my, 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 my sister. Comrade, we need to join forces. But I Twitter must like Queen Ishan. And I saw something again on Queen Cobra's page. Now, I'm but then we touch the prostitute. Anyway, this thing of calling women prostitutes is like, it annoys me. Go ahead, Mama. Sorry, let me, it, let me, call, I, let I me send that a link. About, uh, uh, Mama Pumulo, I heard you <clears throat> saying uh, it's not the duty of the government to, to do. Uh, monitoring of how much people are getting paid in companies. Oh yes, it is the duty of the labor ministry. That's how you see how Ababa Muisa, that's how you know. And that's where you make changes. But if you remain silent and you do not know how much your own people are earning, 
those are the same people who will meet you in the ballot box. And so, <clears throat> Mama, Mama Pumulo, I want to speak a bit about the churches and politics. You see, religion, it plays a very powerful role in modern politics. And, um, but the, it's just that the, it, the relationship between the two are forever changing. Why are they forever changing? Every time there's a new party coming on board or campaigning, that is when you see them going, especially more often in the UCZ churches and the Catholic churches, because that is a population that is already seated and therefore they will be forced to listen to you. The, governor, the governor, governing of a state cannot be separated from uh, uh, religious views of its people because it, it affects the same people that go there to worship. You know, so ethical values of each religion can play a major role on, um, on politics. Religion uh, may sway, uh, Politi and depending on which political favor it wants to go uh, in which direction. Um, but you see, I have seen them a lot going to the UCZ and the Catholics. They go there to go and, you know, like beg for votes. Because when you look, uh, uh, if you correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I think the Catholics still remain one of the largest religious church um, in Africa. Of course, there are so many that are coming up. Um, there's the Anglican that has always been there, the UCZ, and now we equally have the Pentecostals, the Seventh Day have always been there. The, the Watchtower, our brothers and sisters have never participated in politics. They do not even want to, to talk about politics. And so, that's where you see, I remember at one time, uh, the Archbishop Teles from Pundu supported this current government so much so that the, uh, the, the ruling party at the time, which was PF, they started calling him a cadre of UPND. But then when the same Archbishop released a letter of values aligning with its religion because the Catholic have great values to education, good health, love, truth, justice, justice for all, as well as freedom and hope and uh, just helping the vulnerable and the poor. And so when the same Teles from Pundu released a letter, you know, uh, uh, discussing these same values that were not being practiced by the current government. Oh my Lord, Mama Pumulo, he, he, the narrative changed. He was now a cadre for PF because it didn't match with what was happening with the current government. And so churches are there because they see the sufferings of the people. They know what is happening, you see? And so to label them uh, as cadres of opposition, it's to me, it's really a great shame. It's a great shame. If that is the case, then stop going there to amass for sympathy for the religious people to come on board and vote for you. Go and make your campaigns. But when you start labeling this church is aligning itself to this one, that church is aligning themselves to this one, it is wrong. It is really, really long, wrong. Again, I see, you know, uh, uh, some pastors with no shame you find them at one time, they were praising a certain individual. But immediately, you know, there is a change. That same pastor becomes a praise singer 
a serious praise singer in a matter of minutes. Mama Pumulo, that's what I'm talking about. So churches, you are there to minister to your people. And equally, you are there to see how the people are living in society. So that if those people are not being looked after by a government that came to you and sought your votes, yes, the onus is on you to engage them. But then people also should really know when to call somebody a praise singer because they see the sufferings of the people. People go to them, but do not use the churches as a place for you to go and make your donations so that the church is able to sway the votes. This was never the case before. When I was growing up in churches, politicians never used to come and be given a podium. That podium belongs to the men of God men and women of God, and so it should be respected. It's not a campaign ground. It is not. Thank you, Mama Pomolo. The floor is yours. Thank you, dear. So, yes, yeah, so guys, we are talking here because we are being accused, social media, we are being accused of uh, lies and manipulation by a government whom we helped to, to come to the throne. So they use the same one, social media to cross the bridge to government. Now that they are in government, now they are looking back and saying social media is full of lies and manipulation. And we saw a minister saying this in church. You are manipulating the church. That's what it is. You go to church, you live a time, you are the one who's manipulating the church. So that tithe or whatever amount that minister left in that church, can the, can the priest go and can condemn him what he's doing? No. That's why these churches, their mouths are tied because these priests, these politicians, they are going to these churches and leaving hefty tithes and 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 umutulo. That priest, will never say anything bad about the government. So they want to shut everybody up. And now they are using the churches to attack people like myself and Mama Marie and all other social media people who have the heart of the people to complain, to say, look at what these people said. What, look at what they are doing. They say, they say they are going to North, but now they are going South. So we, I think as Zambians, we have to reach a place where we stop being used by politicians. Let us stop putting money. Do not put, in, put money as a factor to support anyone's candidacy. The day Zambians will realize that, I think we are going to have genuine leaders. The churches should also stop entertaining them. Mama Pumulo, I tell you, when they come into the church where I go to, the whole mass is dis disrupted. It's disrupted. We all go to these churches to go and pray. But most of them, when they come to these churches, it's about a shop. You can imagine when a president comes into the church, the level of security that is involved. Mm. It, there's so much security, they, have, they carry so many cadres, they carry their ministers, and they go there just to go and shine because they have brought to my envelopes. This should stop. And so we are appealing to these churches also, they must stop entertaining them. All the churches should stop entertaining them. stadium. Go to the stadium, and there in the stadium, that's when you go and grieve your brown envelopes, Muma Stadium. Because Muma, you know, I think they have spilled because, because nobody's even following in the stadiums. Can you live Muma Stadium to Twaiche? 
Okay. Young boys, small girls and boys are the ones following these people. That's why when I'm mm -hmm. chechi. Today, I'm going to stay in 2026. The only stadium that people are going to meet this government is the Hero Stadium in Lusaka. Mu 2026. Today, I'm going to stay instrument of power. Yeah. The only stadium yeah. that this, they are going to meet people is the, the Hero Stadium to hand over the power. Mama Pumulo, we are urging them to pull up their socks. Pull up their socks. Today I saw on the news that they were signing uh, um, a, an agreement with a certain company. I can't remember his name. It's named to do the, the Lusaka and Dollar uh, Road to make it a dual carriageway. I thank you for that. Very good initiative. We need to see that going. Kudos to you. And when you finish that, I will give you more kudos. I hope it's a Zambian company. I hope it's a Zambian company before you say kudos. Because yeah, all well, the people who are being given contracts, they are foreigners. Eh? These foreigners, when you give them co co contracts, they take the money to their Give our own people a contract. That's what is going to develop Zambia. Eh? We can't keep on repeating the same things over and over again. Look at Zambia the way it is. The main gr grocery stores are my South Africans. You know, everything mm -hmm. is South African. South African, Chinese, Indian, Middle, when Where are Zambians going to get a chance? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's true. I mean, they came, they wrote on the fact that they are now going to give Zambians to flood yes, their. To to, that is how, yeah. To write to flood their products, their agricultural products in all the chain supermarkets, shop rights uh, included, pick and pay included. But when I went to these uh, chain supermarkets and I saw the, the the condition and the of the onions and the potatoes there, they were appalling, Mama Pumulo, from the Zambians. And I said to myself. Why can't this government empower the Zambians to produce onions of the same quality that we are importing from South Africa? South Africa has a, mach a good machinery to use to dry the onions. And that is why you see the onions we buy from South Africa are well, uh, are good quality onions, dry onions. But when you look at the Zambian onions, Mama Pumulo, it is pathetic. The Zambian potatoes during the rainy season, a company that produces a very large quantity of potatoes here, it's called Buyabamba. Buyabamba now is, is giving uh, potatoes to, to ShopRite. And those potatoes only last one day. The next day they are rotten. But when they bring in these potatoes from South Africa, they can stay on the shelf up to one month, Mama Pumulo. And so empower the Zambians with machinery. Yeah. So we've gone back to importing goods from South Africa, our neighboring countries. I mean, surely 58 years of independence and we still cannot even produce, you know, even onions. We have so much land. Surely we can do better than that. We do not, we now need to start exporting to our exactly. neighboring. Zambia can be the breadbasket of Africa because we have land, we have water, uh, we have a flat land. So everything can be done easily. Zambia is flat. Thank you, Mr. Shikele Jones. You have uh, corrected me to say Buyabamba is uh, not a Zambian company, but I know it is based here. Um, in Zambia, so maybe the shareholders may not be Zambians, but uh, I equally know that they, they grow potatoes here in Zambia. Uh, it being uh, a non-Zambian company, uh, thank you for that correction, Mr. Mr. Jones. Mama so, Chika Monica is on the show. Hi, Mama, good to see you. I hope you are fine. Our Mama has a funeral, so... Yes, hopefully she can join us after the, the funeral, you know, is over. 
So Emma, comments, guys. What do you think? These uh, new dawn, we put them in office using social media. Now they have turned around and start saying social media is full of lies and manipulation. Okay, who is lying and who is manipulating? Hmm? No, since our president is a businessman, let him bring good deals in Zambia that will benefit all of us. He's a businessman. Let him bring the deals that we will all say, yes, the Zambians have benefited because they've been given employment. The Zambians have benefited because now they have built more clinics and they are bringing in more uh, medicines in our clinic. Let him tell us uh, when this cholera will end because year in, year out, we are having cholera in Zambia. Surely 58 years of independence, we are still experiencing cholera in Zambia. It, it just cannot happen. I don't know when I last heard that there was cholera in Rwanda, a small country that became independent after us does not even experience cholera. Our attitudes as Zambians equally have to change. Let them build Vanamayo, uh, uh, Navashtata, Ama markets, and position those markets in equally good areas where there is traffic. Tete muye muku wakuli la market ku airport road o kuchongwe, pakatipa chongwe na and the airport. There are no pedestrians there. Remember the people who buy from them are pedestrians. So identify a place where you can build them shelters of markets where they will find customers. Remember they go on the streets because they know Mutaun Emuabantu. So in other countries, what they actually do, Mama Pumulo, is they shift your town. They shift the town to another area. It has happened in Johannesburg, in South Africa. They shift your town and that town, your old town now, they will even turn other buildings into markets. That's what they do in other countries. I think and in people, Zambia they're doing it the same thing. Look at Mandahi, arcades, you know. It's the same thing. Yeah, Manta Hiwakezi, it is the same thing, but then you, you do not have a large population of pedestrians as compared to town center. That's what I'm saying. So I'm saying the town is already shifting. Yes. So let them create room for the traders in Cairo Road or Lumumba Road or wherever. Every major cities, we talked about this last week with Mama, with my, my Mama Judy, to say Kuno, Major cities, they block a section of the town to say traders here, they build toilets and all those things for them. In a central location where people, they just get off a bus. No, but if you take a market in the outskirts, so the vendors, poor people have to take a bus we have pushed that supply. Could need another bus to go to a market? It doesn't make sense. So guys, comments, comments, we'll be closing. We are trying to keep our show to one hour only today, but uh, they are developing stories which uh, ha happened today. For example, a man uh, had his corn, we'll talk about that tomorrow, you know? Some cadres, we don't know if it's PF cadre or New Dawn cadre. However, we hear that there's something that happened where a man's field was slashed. And also there's something happening at Yunza. We'll bring more information tomorrow. So we'll just read the comments and then uh, we will close and we'll be here tomorrow. And if there's an, anything you want to discuss, guys, let us know. You can inbox me. Yes. Mama Pum, I agree yeah. with Alan Chiwe who has said UPND came to power through lies on social media. And now they are scared that the social media they, they promoted their lives on will bring them down. Because exactly. it's the same. Because we, we are holding them accountable. 
Last on Saturday, I had the on the Mwenda. We were talking about their 10 point plan. And that 10 point plan is a, is a, is a scam because nothing has been achieved on that 10 point plan. It's a lie. So you, they are afraid that their lies will catch up with them quickly. They, yes, want, exactly. they, they don't want people to be to kulongana. So they want to withhold information from people. They want to be reporting things on ZNBC just all oh, so they have signed the contract. How many contracts are you going to sign before we start seeing improvement? Eh? And by the way, we are still waiting to be told on that deal you, uh, you signed in the West. Yes. We haven't. What the Congo, mean? the Congo, the Zambia, Congo. We need the contents of that deal. We, yeah, we need the contents of that deal. And so every day we come on this uh, uh, platform before we start our program, we would, we will demand for the contents of that deal. Again today, I was listening to a story where the Sakanyan Dollar Road is now congested. It was not all, it's not only the Kitwe, Chingola, Kasumbalesa Road, it is now the Ndola and Sakanya Road because the, the trucks on the Ndola, uh, on the Ndola Kitwe, Chinilabombwe are so many that they have actually reached and on their way to, to reaching Ndola. So the truckers have opted to now use the Sakanya uh, the Sakanya uh, uh, Mufulira route, which is slowly becoming congested. Now, I want to ask the current government on this platform, what is the problem? What is the delay? You went and held hands with President Chisekedi and called him your brother. Why aren't you talking to your brother in finding a solution to get those trucks to, to move. Because our roads are equally being destroyed. And I hope Zambia is gaining something from there. Those trucks cannot remain there for time immemorial. So the trucks are going into Congo or coming? Going into Congo, Mama Pumoy. So they are not allowing them to go into Congo? Well, the procedure of our brothers and sisters in the Congo is a bit uh, uh, tedious, you know, like they, they have so many trucks. So all and of a sudden, the, the procedure has become tedious all of a sudden? And so the truckers are spending close to two to three weeks um, on the Zambian soil. It has never happened. And you know why this has happened? It's because of that MOU that our president and Mr. Chisekedi went to sign. Yeah. Because they even Chisekedi did not consult his people. And it is some Congolese, they are not happy about this deal. That's why they have put a lock there. They have put, this is what happens when you do things without consultation and the stakeholders, this is the result. Katanga province is the border, right? That's right. Yes, that's so right. Katanga Kasumba. province, could you have a unani? Katumbi Mose, Katrina Nishan, who your minister. Katumba is there. And that guy is there like this with each second. They are not like this. They are like this. You know? So you see where, where our pro now, because of our president signing this deal without consultation, he is affecting lives of Zambians. People who are traveling on the copper belt, it's a nightmare. Yeah. And we are here to say that President, Mr. Haka Inge, review the contents of the MOU that you signed between Congo and Zambia. We Zambians need to know. It's not your country. You can't wake up and sign a, a, a deal which is now affecting millions of lives. Look at what is happening in, in, on that road, on the roads in copper belt. Yeah. All that is be happening because of the deal that you signed. The people in Katanga province, they are reacting. And yeah. now I am a politics. I always say, 
these politics or today, they are real time. Information is traveling. Everyone is aware of what you're doing. If it's a shady deal, people will assess. Panopondi, I can't tell a lie. Everything I'm saying here is based on social media. And if I lie or say something, I'll be fact checked. That's, they don't want us here because we are a, a, an outlet to give out information. Other pages Ma have, with millions of followers, they have given them envelopes. Some page here, Mbinga Wacho Ruchelo, Balela and the Pafia Manani Kani, Antidotix, you know, Bible verses. Pages who are supposed to be educating Zambians about the, the, the what is happening in their country politically. Nobody's reporting. Mama Pumulo, allow me to read the a, 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 a message for Mama, from Mama Maria. I will try. She says, Niva Pianongo, a piano namavala. And Niva Pompwe, Ukufuma, Kurusaka, Ukuyamukuiva Kumansa, Va Pompoliongo, Va Puete, Va Tudiemo, Va Katwe Twe, Katwe Mwe. Yes. Advise Vaputi to revamp Zambia Railways, Mulubushi Textiles, and Kafiwe Nitrogen. Exactly. You know what I was thinking? Why am I tracks are on the Panjanji? Why can they put the, those tracks? Why can they put the merchandise on the train? We have a real system in Zambia. Why have they deliberately chosen to, to be having drivers and paying them 1,000 or 2,000 a month for carrying and, millions of dollars? And Mama Pumulo, some of those trucks carry acid. They carry acid. And it's acid, it is very dangerous to keep those trucks in those queues for such a long time. I'm telling you, Umo, ikesa muturikira pajapeni, pamusebo, ya truck ya acid. I have seen those trucks with acid. They carry acid into the DRC. It's very dangerous. Those trucks need to move as quickly as possible. You see? So we are wondering, we need to be told uh, um, what is happening. Again, we are urging this uh, uh, new Dawn government to equally come out in the open and tell us what's happening in Wapula province there. We hear in Dekeshi, Shirej Talandu, Wapula, Ubushi. Plans are, and plans are taking off. When social media came and, and presented a story about Suja Light, Mwale Kana, no matter there you have now fired your own people who are thieves. And we are being told there are bigger fishes behind this. We want those bigger fishes to be scooped out. Don't take yeah. the remnant. The, the VP is being implicated, honestly. But Mukaba Pristi. Who can we trust? This is a pastor's wife who is implicated in a cellular scandal, you all. Avena Zambia, Shimuke me. Don't trust anyone. Don't trust a priest. You, we all have direct access to God. Priest na ena muntu fiebela vela muma church no you know, swaying us to think like priests are holy. Hmm? Do not trust anyone, just trust you when I say it's between you and God. We all have a direct link to God. The link is between you and God. Do not look to these pastors. The next day, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Mama Pumulo, we are waiting for the evidence 
I will tell you in her own voice, she's going to tell you because I find her very emotional when she's expressing herself. So I'm sure she's going to tell you if you think I am implicated, then you wait, wait for the uh, investigative agencies to do their job. That's the yeah, issue. You know what? You are not talking to us like we are in kindergarten to start with. This is a country, you know? It's a republic, it's 20 million people, and the truck to carry cellulite, they need clearance. A plane to land in a Zambian soil, they need clearance. Any plane, the president has to be aware of what is happening. So don't tell us we are telling lies. Yeah. Between you and us, who's taking, who's telling lies? In the Kapapu teach the land in Mozambique, it needs clearance. And if it's a private jet, the president has to know. It's a national security. Days are gone, guys. Days are gone. They are a special app. So they have special applications where in the airspace they can see all kinds of planes that are landing. And this is what I want Ama youths to engage, use your intellect to do these things to save Zambia. So what lies are you saying? When they are proof to say any plane that is flying in the world, there is a technology it can be tracked. And before it comes in the space of Zambia, it needs clearance, otherwise they can shoot it down. But Zambia Air Force can shoot that plane down. Mama Pumulo, the same Roy, Roy, um, I've forgotten his um, last name, has confessed that there is a big fish involved. Of course. If you listen to that audio, he has confessed that there's a big fish. Of course, of Mama, Alaska. that is not even a question. There is, because no plane can land in a country without clearance from plot one. Zambia Air Force has to clear a plane after, to land the command sign it can send you wherever after all they have distorted the story of uh, given lubinda when they reported that given lubinda implicate implicates balungu into mukula what he said was a, a, a truck could not leave loaded with mukula unless the president authorized the security to be uh, escorted with that truck, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, kaba nienu ifi pato. Given ni uliai alimukoti mule museka. Ukuna imwe mui kerefe mule iba suji la ituku. You know, they say, remove the speck in your eye before you castigate someone else. Cellulite and more and gold, could it gold all over? Could it wins, could it gold? Can they say, could it gold? Ama mines, you don't say the mining deals are scandalous. They are looting, they are giving our minerals almost free. Zambian minerals, any, these are the terms. I heard Bakabuswe was talking about the mines. He said, Chilawongo is so poor when we have been mining since the 1900s. Fine. Back up, so what is your government doing as Minister of Mines? Are you making sure that any new mining contract in Zambia is is gay is uh, only is uh, only getting less than forty nine percent? Is this what is happening? Like Zambia is getting fifty one percent of all contracts. Back up, so is the Zambian getting fifty one percent of all the contracts? Is the Zambia getting more than fifty one percent of all the profits? Is it, are these mining companies you are bringing in, are they hiring 95% of Zambian workers? Do you have a clause in these terms of agreements to review all these policies annually? Do you, are you ensuring that these mining companies are paying workers minimum global wage? Not yama 2,000 kwa mine, ule good. 
What, what are you doing? Mule that Mule want me to do. Really expose these documents. We want to see that you're actually doing the right thing for Zambians. Otherwise, as uh, if you keep condemning us and not providing proof to show us that you are doing these five basic things, Zambia must own 51%. 51% of the profits minimum because we should even be getting 80%. Ownership must be 51%. Pay our workers enough money. And the terms must be reviewed, the safety and everything, are they complying? If they are not complying, you revoke the license. What we have is a, is a hot cake. If the East doesn't buy, the West will buy. The East will buy or South will buy. It's about time Zambia benefits from its resources. And how is it going to benefit when we have a VP implicated in, in a looting? Actually, it's looting because they don't have a license. The truck was impounded, the cellulite, because they have a license. And then again, we come to that same mind. Last comments, Mama Nick. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Mama. Mama, 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 gold is finishing. And he's equally told us that Mama, will be in parliament to give uh, uh, um, the parliamentarians uh, an account of what is happening. Could you light? So, I hope you are going to I hope you are going to tell the people of Zambia the truth about what is happening. Hello, I hope it is not blood minerals. The, 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 the little children to go and start uh, uh, getting that sujilite for you. And whoever was taking that sujilite, we hope you equally handsomely awarded them. Because in Pia Twang, we got more, Vare Akanava, and Avantu, Avobat Tire Fire, Quena, Chabolanda. It's a lot of money, Mama Pumulo. I had figures like I took out and gave um, 350,000 to somebody very senior in the party. We want to know who that senior person in the party is. Baroy, Okishiba, Nibana, Yawabe, never senior Kada in the party, our Mapiama, two hundred and fifty thousand, three hundred thousand dollars. Balum Buleni, Kaidime, Tapali Chenu, Navamitan Fiacadentito. You are already now going into court. You have nothing to lose. Twelve, me to the Okishiba, Nibana, me. You said there's a big fish to the Lorena. Thank you, Mama. Mama so we are Mulo. closing, guys. But in closing, um, I just want to give an example. So the bag in Wananda Pali, Pali cellulite is a precious stone, it's pricey. The real market, the real market price is it? about 80,000 US dollars per ton. So a truck in Moisenda Matanianga, let's say one ton you send that one truck you send 50 tons. So if one truck carries 50 tons, that is four million US dollar. It ain't a truck in Moya. The real market price is four million US dollar. Now four million US four million US dollar. Can you imagine? And they've been mining this illegally, impoverishing the people of Guapula. I feel sad. The, the story of Guapula province makes me real, makes me really feel sad. Because it's a province which is depicted to be very poor, but very rich. But we have thieves looting their own people. Looting your own people, my man, to my life, no, could you have another play to Pata Nanguni University? Mwani Firokuba Kulila out of their own money from their land of their ancestors, Mwani Firwa Zambia to Abasha and Mwani to Zambian politicians, please. Mwani Kwata Kwemiti, Mwani to 
Chika mituwala kui sempie shine shu mulei wa mulei nunga. Na pela mkwa ine, this is my, I just leaving a question to, my my last comment is just leaving this question to politicians. So, politicians kwa te ni mitima. Mwai wa pafula, it's time for you to start pumping back this money for Zambians to start benefiting. It's really time. Nganiwana rumango mafuma mwe mdi. And the MMD are the original themes. Seba kwa tempia shacharo MMD. Whoever had something to do with the MMD, they are the original master planners. Arabo seba lenda kemu molu yaba MMD. They are they are just following MMD. The master planners were in MMD. They set this country on this path. Because if MMD did the right thing, right now Zambia would be like a Dubai. From Bakaunda. This country will be paradise. But this country has continued to sink deeper and deeper. Every politician wants to be richer than the last, the last politician who was there. What about the owners of the land? Mama, the floor is yours. Yeah, so in closing, uh, Mama Pumulo, I just want to... Um, advise the, the current government that uh, social media is here to stay. We will continue talking, we'll continue propounding, and please don't curtail our rights. It's like taking a lady to the bar. And the lady goes back there alone. At why have you gone back there? You took me to the bar. So what is the problem with me going back there? Huh? So you took us to the bar and now we've gone back to the bar. The same bar you took us to, to enjoy that drink with you is it? So that is social media. That's why we are back in the bar. Enjoying that drink that you bought for us in that bar. Thank you very much, viewers, and uh, we hope to see you tomorrow with another very interesting topic. Mama Pumulo, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, viewers. Follow, like, share. We appreciate you. We are here. We are Ubuntu. We are changing the page name, guys. It's no longer Queen Pumi Show. It's Ubuntu Forum, Ubuntu Cafe, because we are human rights advocates. And we are here, we are talking because we are in democracy. We are in a democratic world. And democracy is not only for the East or the West, but democracy is for every human being. We must respect our rights. And uh, also our, our leaders, our political leaders must respect our human rights, not only when you are, when you are campaigning. When you're actually in the office, walk your talk, respect our rights. Yes, watch our show and learn from it. And if I'm wrong, comment there. Let's have an open door policy. I challenge you actually these leaders to actually be engaged on a non-government affiliated sites and have open forum discussions. You should not uh, limit yourself to being interviewed by hand-picked uh, hand journalists or state-run uh, media houses. Why can't our president come on the media as this? Why can't we talk with Mr. Kabusu? I challenge you. Come here, we talk, we ask you questions. If you are genuinely for the people and by the people, you will engage us and not condemn us for actually calling you out on your failed campaign promises. And if you really want to deliver, take Zambia out of poverty, you will not be offended if we tell you that you are failing to deliver. You will take that as a challenge and start working to improve life of Zambians. And that's what we are here. Thank you so much. God bless and good night. Good night. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs>